chew game. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that one might be a golf show one. Those are awesome. I mean, like, I collect Adidas golf shoes. Those are phenomenal. It is, yeah. That's my team, too. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Love it. So, talk to me about your game. Yeah. Predictability where it's going to go. Does it curve both ways? Can it curve both ways? When it goes left, it's, it's a slice. Yeah. What about the one to the right? Is it just a pull? Rare, rare, more rare. Yeah, it's a pull. Okay. And that, I've well, you know, I don't know if it's the right correction, but yeah. I, uh, I just try and grip over. Band aid on a broken arm. <laughs> that's right. Okay. <laughs> so that's. Lim Minimizes those. Yeah. But it's also going to take your speed away, and you're going to make some good motions that don't send the ball far enough. They just go too high. That'd be a pretty good short game grip yeah. for like hitting it over the tent. You know what I mean? Um, okay, grab an eight iron. Let's let me see what's going on. We'll have a chat about your swing. Where do you normally play? Or where do you like to play? Oh yeah, yeah right. Okay. Yeah. I'm in Oakville. That's not far. Okay. Great spot. Yeah. So different. Like May golf and July golf and October golf is so different at that place. It's amazing. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, please. Taking lessons before? Many years ago. Many years ago. Okay, do you have anything on your swing thought checklist? Like, what are you trying to do? Um, with the irons, with the irons, I'm just trying to go as far, but I always, even with my irons and my driver, I tend to fall out. Yeah, swing, yeah, right? yeah. You probably saw that already. Um, but to stay down on it. Trying to do that? Yeah. Cool, okay. Um, so first things first, this is an 8 iron. Ball should be a little bit more back in your stance. Okay. Just a touch. There you go, I like that setup a lot. body's going to feel tall. I don't want you to go tall and raise your arms up at the same time. Okay? I want to feel like you get tall. Great shot. Okay, you timed it well too. That's a little more height on it, huh? Yeah. yeah. Just a sign the club's going to be a little more well, straight through the shot. Okay, so same thing. Push forward and tall. Good one. Another nice one. So you'll notice with this one that when I come through the shot, the grip of the club ends up right in front of the middle of me, right? I have the grip right in the middle of me. I haven't finished my swing 
and pulled it around to the side. That's going to add another layer of lag, and this cuts the corner. Now this is lagging. It's slower, right? I really want to feel as though that I can get my, when I stand tall, that it pulls my arms up to here, that it just pulls my arms to there. All I'm trying to do is stand tall, and it pulls my arms to here. Okay? Bad, a little thin. Good job. The thin shots, the ones where you feel like you put so much energy in them, but they don't go anywhere. Yeah. Okay, those shots right there, that's when your arms try to swing past your body and you end up finishing this way. Almost like this is back and now you're leaning forward. And if you felt as though that what started the downswing was you starting to lean and slide yourself in front of the golf ball, that thin shot would never happen anymore. But it's, uh, it's when you try to fire your upper body before putting your lower body into position, that's when that thin shot happens and it feels like it's like, oh, yeah. It can be a pull on the back at times too. So just make sure, so let's talk about this setup to your shot here. You have to, if this is where the golf ball is relative to you, you have to try and put your hips, like both hips in front of this line, right? And once they slide forward, then they're already there and you can back up from there. So this is like where, you know, in the world of Golf Digest where they have one picture of a red X and the next one has a big green check mark, I've taught a lot of people off the red X that don't do, they don't slide their hips like crazy, but they go back the other direction, right? They need the slide. All right, so set it to your shot. Take it up to the top, hold it up there. And so your first move down might feel like you're trying to drive this hip as close to the target as you can. Just bump it forward, three, four, five, six inches. Bump, then hit. Yeah, yeah, bump it forward, then hit. So if I did that and I just bumped forward and hit the shot, Right? It kind of slows my turn down a little bit, but it already sets up my lower body in front of my upper body. It gives me that tall kind of leaning back look because this has gone forward. Right? So if we can feel like it's just sliding that hip forward the most, you're going to feel like you're way in front of the golf ball. And then when you hit it and lean back, it's going to get the club to go down as you go up. So you want to try and finish like this. I'll stand right here. And you want to try and finish with the, the mid, middle of you pushed forward, the upper body pushed back, couldn't feel taller right now, as tall as you can get. Yep. And all of that's going to activate your legs to make sure you don't lose your balance. So tall forward, bump through. Awesome. Great strike. Really good strike. That's okay. Like, it's really not going to have any effect on your aim or where the ball is going to go for that matter. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that little amount, for sure. You're just trying to like, use your feet to push your whole pelvis forward like a big hip check. Yeah. You're trying to hip check something. Good. 
feel the club kick differently? Yeah. Yeah. I went farther. So that's kind of the move. And like, I mean, I'd hate to have you go home to your buddies and be like, man, he taught me how to slide my hips forward. And they're like, man, he's an idiot. But like, <laughs> this is the piece that you need. Okay. And we can tell by the end of your finished position being here, the only difference there is that this is too far back and this is too far forward. So if I had to slide my hips to look the right way, like the TPC Toronto logo, right? Hips are always in front of the shoulders, right? That's kind of where I want to get you today. And if you feel like you're doing it and you're jumping into that, that's where you're going to get your speed from. So if we can speed that up in our next session, let's right now just try and get the, the feeling of you doing whatever you have to do to initiate your downswing getting to here first. The biggest hip slide, the biggest hip push through, and stand tall. Great shot. Are a few of those showing up just like that? Yeah. Because yeah. that's, the, that's the move. You did the move right, and that's the ball flight that should show up with it. So if you want to hit this ball harder, okay, and I think that's probably the next step for where you're going here, is that I want you to feel like you change direction with your body faster, not with your arms and club. Right? They're going to stretch out and get more lag. They're, you're not going to feel any speed or any muscle in your arms or club. I want you to feel like you basically turn one way and turn the other way faster in a shorter period of time. And if you can get your torso to turn back and through the same motion, just harder and faster, it's going to make the club go faster. It's the first step, I think, to your distance. Because you take the club back far enough, so that's rule number one. Rule number two is change direction faster. Rule number three is once you've changed direction faster, get standing up harder, like a jump. So we can get to that third one, perhaps, but I want to see how you change direction. Like, and I don't think you're going to know how far you can hit it until you, you know, sometimes you hit golf balls like harder than you would on the golf course, like over speed training. So let's hit three balls right now as hard and as far as fast as you can hit it. If you don't hit it solid, big deal. Let's just try for speed. Okay. Now you're playing for the pole. Okay, hold on a sec. No, let's start. Let's go back to the straightness. Um, okay, so you lose your balance in your swing when your upper body takes off like this and it shows up with the back leg kicking out. Okay, so all that is is your upper body, your chest, your shoulders is unwinding too early in the game. So if to hit this ball harder, I want you to feel like you turn your legs to the target and stand up harder with your legs rather than try to do anything with your upper body. I want all of your, from here up, all the way to your fingertips, I want all that stretched harder, not moving faster. Okay? So uh, give me a couple practice swings, and I want you to feel like what you're doing is you're trying to turn the front of your legs to the target with your upper body still back, twisted back. Okay, hold, all right, one more time. All the way through, hold your finish. Okay, hold it there. Mm, okay, we need to do something about the finish. There's something going on that's not letting you stick the finish. Um, might have to just think of your feet, think of your shoes. Think of pushing into the ground 
and like you can only move because your lower body's letting you go. Good, hold it there. Good job, one more time. Okay, good. All right, so the finished position that I want you to try to find is you went up like this, so lower body was really good, but now take the club and put the club back down behind the ball where, it, where the ball would be. And that would get your lower body twisted more toward the target than your upper body. But when you finish your swing, your upper body is rotated past your lower and it's over rotated too soon. Another way for me to put it. So, um, and this is the hardest one to kind of fix because it's, it's difficult to get the golfer to feel it, right? But like when you come down into your downswing, you're going to want to try and feel like your lower body is turned, but your upper body is still in a backswing feel, right? Feeling like, well, it's left-handed. So lower body's to the right, upper body's to the left. And that's how you want to feel like you come through the shot, right? That's your twist. So try that for me. Hold the club out like this. Okay, so turn the lower body to the target. Okay, all the way through, keep going, let the feet come up. All right, now hold it here. Now leave the legs where they are and turn your shoulders back that way. Yeah, that's where I want to try and get you to feel like you're getting to. Now, that's weird. Like, I wouldn't know when in the swing you would feel that way. But I want to see if you can feel like you can make a swing and feel like at the end of this that the lower body's twisted more to the left or more to the right than the upper body. Right, just make a swing and try and feel like it's there at the end. Okay, one more time, keep going with it. We'll find a move to it. Lower body only, upper body doesn't unwind from the top. Good. Yeah, it's your loss of balance is all when your upper body, your shoulders in particular and your chest, extra wind at the top, at the end of the swing. They unwind too far, right? There's like, there's, there's a few really big name teachers in the States that talk about how the shoulders and the chest aren't ever supposed to unwind. They're never supposed to get open, right? That the lower body unwinds toward the target. That didn't do anything to this, but stretch things out. And then as my arms swing through, that's what turns my shoulders. So there isn't actually a shoulder rotation toward the target at all. So if, there's some, if that's added in somewhere, that's being really strong and powerful upstairs in your body, making your lower body the most fragile to balance, right? Try and feel like it's your legs trying to turn around to the right, trying to get your left thigh touching the right, the right thigh without your upper body going. Good. Feel that twist, that reverse twist of the upper body. Good Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like, this is going to be something that, you know, I don't want to say you have to practice. You just have to be diligent in this feeling. And all it's going to take is one shot for you to feel like that you don't have to do something and the ball's going to take off really good. But I would say that all of the shots that went right today and all of the ones where you lose your balance at the end is from your shoulders opening up toward the target too soon and too hard. And I want it to feel like it's your lower body that's trying to face the target and get up. Upper body can hang out back here and look at the shoes if they want. That's the twist we're looking for. Not bad. Blue flag? Let's go to the blue flag, change it up a bit.
ครับMost often, I don't know, 55, 60% of the time, you have your foot stance line aimed to the left of the target. So your ball lines aimed to the left of your target. Now, when you hit your good shots, they start pretty straight, they curve back to the right, everything looks okay. The only trouble with that is that as you set your stance up more to the left, you're going to want to use your shoulders to get you back that way. So the more you can feel, especially for a practice session, aiming 15 yards right of the target, and still getting the ball to start on the target line, that's going to give you a better sensation of what it's like to swing out and away from you. So when we hear people talk about swinging like in to out or out to in, it has a lot more to do with the club swings relative to them. So out to in relative to me comes across the line. In to out relative to me goes outside that way. And the more that you can feel like it's going in to out to send it off to the left, the higher and farther and straighter it goes. So feeling as though that your stance is open, still trying to hit the target that's going to be more left than you're used to is just going to make all this stuff work a little bit better. Like there's, there's, there's stance lines that aren't straight that work for some swings. Yeah. The way that you swing the club, it's actually better to have your stance open than it is closed. It just works that way. And so with the wedge, because there's so much loft and it's so upright, you can get away with it. But if you do that with the driver, you bring in way left as a miss, that could be a lost ball. So you could, let's call it straight with the wedges, and then as the club gets longer, you aim more and more to the right. Not bad. So I think that when it comes to what you're trying to do, you know, with your lower body, with your feet, the more you can feel like this foot, the left foot stays down, doesn't come up, that it stays down, and your left knee tries to touch your right knee, that's going to keep you in balance. That's going to avoid the tail wagging out. And if we have to get to a point we do a left foot drill, we do it. But sometimes just a little bit of information helps too. 